Hey guys, this is Tyler, and today I'm going to be tearing apart the power supply in my E-Machines T1742, which I don't know if you can see, but it's sitting right there. Now, this particular power supply is the Beztec ATX-250-12E power supply, and the reason why this fails is because something in the twi uh, bleh, something in the 5-volt standby rail will short out and then go on to push 12 plus volts sometimes out of the 12-volt rail and then fry your chipset, which basically will just kill your entire computer if the chipset gets fried. And the revision model that's known to fail is the P5, P6 and P7. I have the P4, but I don't know if that one's particularly going to fail. But just to be safe, I asked a comment on this video right here, just to see. His name is Cube Computer Channel. And the reason why I did that is because of this. But it reads that the reason why they fail is because it says that the capacitor on the 5-volt standby rail in the Beztec ATX 250-12V power supply is placed right next to a hot running diode, which ends up causing a problem. The heat from the diode cooks the capacitor, the capacitor fails, and regulation gets all out of whack. Sometimes with a small load, it shoots as high as 12 volts. Remember, this is a 5-volt rail. The high voltage cooks the board's chipset, and if a short occurs, the power supply ends up finishing itself off. Which also means that like it completely fries itself and will not and will will not work. It's like a chain reaction. This power supply's five volt standby rail circuit is horribly made. No PWM, just a capacitor and the regulator. No short circuit protection is built in either. Now I don't know what PWM is, so I'm gonna cut this part out while I'm while I'm looking up what that is. So I just looked it up. PWM stands for pulse with modification or mod modulation which is a fancy term for describing a type of di digital signal it is used in various it, applications including sophisticated con control circuitry common and way we blah 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 so it's just something the way it controls power so this thing has no pwm it's just a capacitor and, and the regulator and it has no short circuit either sorry if, if i just wasn't looking at the camera i'm also looking at, at my computer screen um so yeah, let's get into the video. One more thing. I um, uh, want to share a quick, quick, quick story with you guys. Um, a long time ago, my dad went and got an E-Machines. I don't know what model or the power supply. And it failed within uh, about a year of my dad having that computer. He took it over to the Geek Squad, I think. And they said that he... Needed to get a brand new motherboard, which was going to cost more than just getting a brand new e-machine, so he just, he just got a brand new e-machines. Now, the, the reason why I'm speculating at this point why it was the best tech power supply that he had in his computer is that it's just a bad power supply overall. It was probably the, the revision P6 and P7. Um, Peter, please don't walk in front of my camera buddy. Okay, go. I don't step on my computer. Cats, I tell you. He just stepped right over my computer, right where my hard drive is. Don't you just love when that happens? Um, so he just got a brand new computer. And I'm guessing it was the power supply where the 5-volt rail, something shorted out. 5-volt standby rail where something... I thought it was walk, walking in my closet. Where something shorted out and just completely fried the motherboard, so... Quick story. Now let's actually get into the video. Well, here I am in my garage with my E-Machines T1742 computer. And I just found out that I have um, uh, one of the worst, best tech power supplies ever made. Let's see if I can get a shot of this. The Beztec ATX250-12E. These things have a tendency to push 12 volts out of my 5 volt standby rail and effectively and kill the motherboard, the chipset, the CPU, and basically make this a non-functioning computer. So what I'm about to do right now is pop out the power supply and open up the power supply to see if it's bad or good. See you guys when I have it open. Here's the inside of the Beztec ATX250-12E. Now I'm not sure if that means it's bad or if that's just melted glue obviously from the heat of its use, but 
look at that capacitor. That one r right, let me get my finger in there. That one right there, looks like it's slightly popping off. Holy moly! Wow, that's a bad power supply. I don't trust my computer to this. Half the capacitor on this board are ready to literally just come right off the board. That capacitor, let me see, right there. If you can see, it's cockeyed. It's halfway off the board. Now, I'm not touching those because those are my main ones, from like my 12 volt rail or something. I'm not even gonna touch those. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's those two right there. And that's my 12 volt, my 5 volt standby rail. And if you look, right next to it, looks like it's burnt my PCB. If you don't know what that means, it's basically the motherboard inside here. Looks like it's burnt it. That looks, that looks fine. I think that's just like glue they used to like hold it on or something. I'm honestly not sure. But, uh, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, then again, I am not a power supply expert. It's not honestly sure. Let me see if I can find where my power is for my fan. Well, crap. Looks like the fan power is right there, and it goes over to that fan, which blows air out. I was kind of thinking of making, maybe making an intake so it could have cool air going through it, and then out these vents, which are kind of covered up by this giant, by these heat sinks to cool off something for power, obviously. But, yeah. It does not look the greatest inside this power supply. Then again, this is why Best Take has a very bad reputation for this one power supply with the 5 volt standby rail. Which sometimes when you actually turn on the power supply or even just plug in the power supply, I saw this one video on YouTube. I think it was like something computer cube gaming or something. I don't know. It escapes my head at the moment. He actually plugged in this exact power supply and put like a voltage meter up to it. It shot up to 12 point, like 12.5 volts of power shooting out of that 5 volt standby rail by just turning on it, by just turning it on. And it was not just going from like 12.5 down like in half a second to 5. It was going on super slow and staying like, it was going down slowly by like 7.5. It took like a minute for it, for it to get down like 7.5. So, the board in this thing. <sighs> Doesn't look like I'll be using this computer very or pretty much at all until I can get a brand new fan or power supply for that matter. Hmm. I might be able to do something with this, but I don't really feel like doing anything with it. All because I don't feel like electrocuting myself and killing myself. So I have the camera's like very shaky and I'm not very happy right now. Actually, it doesn't look bad. Then again, I'm not an expert. With that capacitor right there, that was really bothering me. That's supposed to be flush on the PCB, and look, you can see completely under it. Not supposed to happen with something like this. Sorry if um, if this video is kind of bad. I'll put uh, something at the beginning of the video probably to tell you that, but. I'm not very happy right now. I just found out from that guy that I was talking about earlier. I'm not very happy about my situation right now. I'm gonna inspect some more and then come back with you guys in about uh, obviously like ha ha like a few seconds to you guys, but probably like a few minutes for me and do some more investigation. For further inspection, I found out that this Beztec unit is one of the few survivors of the ATX 250-12E family that is actually still in almost fully working order. The only thing that I found that's bad about this board is, uh, okay, let me find it, right there. That is where it got so hot it almost burned through my motherboard on the power supply. But, oh, what does that say? Warning for protection of the level of fireplace, the same type and ratings of fuse, yeah, whatever. Uh, but other than that, and 
that this power supply is in most is in fully functioning order. I have no complaints of this power supply except that it is a best tech unit of the 250 watt variant and the 12E family that this is not a good computer or power supply and it's pro probably going to fail within the next year or two and when it fails it's probably also going to fry my entire computer that is if I keep it plugged in this entire time which most likely I'm probably not going to have it plugged in a lot this is one of the computers that runs Windows XP and as we all know or should know that Windows XP went out of support sometime in early-ish 2014. So this computer is really only good for turning on and playing 3D Pinball or Minesweeper if that's more your thing. Or if you're really into that kind of stuff you can, play, you can also play Solitaire on this thing. But other than that this computer is mostly just going to stay in my closet and stay shut off. Like I said, this computer is good for nothing except for playing like the pre-installed games and sitting in the desktop. So, with that being said, actually wait, that's not all for this video. The only reason why this, why these best tech units are bad, look on the back and get this cable, these cables out of the way. Look how much ventilation that is. It's not a lot, and it's only this one. It's the 12E family that's still pretty good. It's only the 250 watt variant of the 12E family that's bad. That's because there's not a lot of ventilation on all the others. Ventilation all throughout the bottom, like all throughout the bottom, and that part is not blocked out. So when my father gets home, I'm gonna see if there's a way that we can maybe cut that out, very gently of course, and then get some more ventilation into there. And because this, goes on top of the power supply like that to cover all that. Let me see if I can cut a strip out of there. Get some more, get, also get some more ventilation into the power supply to cool off the my 5 volt rail and everything else in the PC. But another thing that I tried to do while I was not recording is that I took off this zip tie right here and attempted to flip the fan around in this so it blow cool air into the power supply and then out these ventilation holes but that did not happen because the little tiny let me see if I can get it on camera that thing right there there's four of those on there to protect the fan blades don't know why it's not on that side either but whatever it was hitting that white thing right there and the copper on it it was hitting that so that was a no go so I just put it all back the way it was so it's still gonna be blowing out the back Whatever, I'm not done. Like I said, I'm going to leave this computer undone until my dad gets home. Then see if I can make it, uh, put some more ventilation in here and make this thing run a bit cooler. And also, I have not made a video on my updated computer collection. This is a hint hint to that video that might be up in a day, might, might be up in a week, might be up in a month. I don't know, I don't really have planning for YouTube, I just do it when I feel like I would like to make a YouTube video. But when I got this system, it had a spot for an exhaust fan or an intake fan, depending on which one you want. So I went over to Best Buy with my mom and got a 80mm fan for this system. Had the plug for it right down there, put my system fan header. Got it in there, and for some reason it blows in and out at the same time. I'm thinking it's because I get somewhat neutral and po or negative and positive pressure at the same time because not much ventilation holes. The power supply is blowing out, and that's blowing out. But then again, if I make that blow in, I'm going to get more cool air into the system, and then more cool air is going to go into there, and then possibly into my power supply. That might be in the future, or I might actually just do that now probably my best bet just to make make it an intake because then on the sides you can just blow the air out like that I don't know right now so after I looked through the power supply and determined that this is not even a computer that I'm gonna have up that often maybe like once or twi twice a month at most maybe not even that much I've decided that the power supply in here is completely fine if I do um, uh, find a 300 watt Beztech power supply that's compatible with this computer and it's on and it's pretty cheap and it looks like it's fine I might snag it and see if it works 
And that's all for now. Tune into the next video. This has been Tyler. Leave a like on the video if you liked it. Leave a dislike if you liked it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Now in the last clip I recorded, some of you might say that, Wait, you didn't plug everything in. Yes, I did. Right after I ended the video, I plugged everything back in.